Happy Bombay! I'm here with PJ Raval, director of Who We Become, a fantastic documentary which is currently streaming on Netflix that follows three Filipino women uh, during the pandemic as they grapple with social justice issues, activism, and what that means for their community. Um, PJ, really love the film. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm really excited to chat with you. This film was really powerful um, and it premiered um, on Netflix uh, last Friday. And so it's out there broadly in the world. And so how has it been for you to have it out there finally for everyone to see? And what's some of the feedback you've been getting? I mean, it's amazing. It really is a dream come true, right? As a filmmaker, you know, we're making films and obviously we want people to see it. So to have a platform like Netflix that can reach you know, millions of people is is amazing. And I have to really thank Array uh, releasing for, you know, for really championing the film and, and partnering with us. Um, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine a better uh, partnership. I couldn't agree more. I was really excited to see uh, that you teamed up with Array for this, obviously Ava DuVernay's company and um, Ava is amazing. And I'd love to hear how that came about. How did the uh, collaboration with Array um, develop and, and what's the process been like? Yeah, you know, right before the pandemic hit, um, Array put on a weekend of uh, Filipino, uh, Filipino American films at their um, creative campus that was programmed by Marie Hamora and uh, Cinema Sala. And it was really a really great moment where a lot of Filipino American filmmakers came together and we were screening work and meeting each other. And, and it just was really a, an amazing time. So that was kind of my first um, introduction to them. And, and thankfully, I guess they've just been watching what I've been doing since. That's amazing. So did they approach you when the film came out? Or was this um, even before, I know the film originally premiered at the um, Los Angeles Asian Pacific International Film Festival. And in terms of timing how, and the relationship, how did that develop? Uh, I mean, I think they were just curious to see what I was, you know, working on ever since that, um, that weekend, which was, which was really great. And I think they've been obviously very intentional about the kind of, um, you know, filmmaking that they're supporting and different communities. And, you know, it's just amazing that they're also located in the historic Filipino town in uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, it's a perfect fit, right? It's like it, it was meant to be. <laughs> So tell me a little bit about um, how you came up with the idea for this film. Um, I know I've heard you in some other interviews talk about um, Kapa, the, the Tagalog concept of kind of together in this community. Um, but what was your inspiration and goal for this story? Yeah, I think at some point I realized that I had um, met a lot of uh, specifically this younger you know, younger than me, Filipino American generation um, who were really outspoken about, you know, their beliefs, uh, you know, their thoughts, their feelings, maybe even their politics. Um, and I recognize that a lot of them held very close relationships with friends, families, you know, community members, real close loved ones who maybe held very different points of view and had different perspectives. Um, and rather than have some kind of division between them, they were still managing to, you know, have a really honest uh, relationship. And I think that kind of became the inspiration was trying to uh, show this, um, you know, kind of cultural experience of these Filipino Americans still figuring out a way to, um, you know, live their kind of authentic lives, but also communicate that and share that with their family who maybe has their own, uh, you know, very different experiences. Yeah, and that really resonated with me um, as a second generation Korean American. You know, my parents are immigrants. Um, they're much older and have very different differing views and their life experience is very different from mine. And I think there's one moment, I think it's Monica um, who says like, I can't just abandon my family even if they don't agree with what, with what I say. Um, how much of, of that experience is your lived experience? Like, do you mind sharing a little bit about what that's like for you and your loved ones and community in terms of um, the generational gap and, and different perspectives? Oh, sure. I mean, did my parents, you know, immigrate here to the United States from the Philippines to have a, uh, you know, queer son that would make films? <laughs> you know, I don't know, <laughs> you know, but that's definitely what they got. Um, and, you know, and, and I think, uh, you know, so for me, of course, like, you know, I think um, at some point, uh, you know, I have to acknowledge that my experience is very different from my parents' experience. I have to acknowledge that, um, 
you know, who, who I am to the world needs to also be the same person that is to my family. And I think the other thing is I sometimes real, you know, I, at some point I think I realized sometimes it's actually the family who maybe might actually know you the least because there's a little bit of a fear of letting your family know who exactly you are, because there might be, um, you know, they might uh, disapprove or they might be disappointed and, you know, it might come across as disrespectful if, if you don't um, hold the same points of view. And I think, if anything, I hope this film is a reminder that that, does, that doesn't have to be the case, right? Um, and as someone who is a queer individual, you know, who very much went through what a lot of people would describe as a coming out process, right, in terms of sharing your truth with the rest of the world and and hoping that they will accept it and love you equally um, after they know something about you, that which they probably already knew, <laughs> right? Um, I think it's a similar thing, right? It's this idea of trying to be your authentic and honest self um, and uh, being vulnerable and hope and hoping that uh, you know that close loved one, maybe that family member, um, will give you that trust and vulnerability back. Yeah, that's so powerful, and. I really appreciate your point about sometimes family knows you the least because especially as Asian Americans, sometimes there's a lot about putting a mask on to be, you know, what's uh, um, respectable or what's accepted within our communities. And I think that's definitely something that we all struggle with. And we see that in your film. So um, the, you know, three women are Lauren, Monica, and Jenna. And I think we see that in, in varying ways. I appreciate it. There's a moment where Lauren just she tells her family, like, by the way, <laughs> I'm by, I have a girlfriend. And I thought that was an incredibly uh, powerful moment. Um, could you talk about how you got connected with the three, with Lauren, Monica, and Jenna, and why they were the perfect um, kind of focus points for your story? Yeah, so at first I set out to make a film that would, you know, think about this kind of divide, right? Whether that be a generational divide, you know, a divide in, you know, point of view, maybe even an ocean, who knows, right? Just, but this idea of this divide and people figuring out a way to kind of be that bridge, right, between the two, which I think is, is really a lot of the experience of those who are children of immigrants, right? Um, or anyone kind of part of a diasporic community. Um, so, I, you know, thankfully, I already knew Lauren and Monica, um, and so I kind of reached out to them with a few other people just to see who might be interested, who might be, um, you know, brave enough and trusting enough maybe to kind of embark on this, on this journey with me. Um, and then the pandemic hit, right. And everything pivoted and I pivoted along with it and thought, well, now is a really amazing time to be doing this project because every day is something new and unexpected and it's a moment of reflection it's a moment of transition it's a moment of growth and you know the urgency of documenting the moment and what was happening in people's lives became um really clear to me so so thankfully you know lauren and monica were definitely on board with that and through the producer cecilia armejia i was able to meet uh jenna and, uh, you know, and then as soon as I met Jenna, I kind of thought like, okay, these three individuals together will be an amazing um, story, right? And, and seeing how all three of them are, are experiencing this moment and what are these kind of commonalities and differences between them. I can't even imagine um, what went through your head once the pandemic hit. <laughs> you have this film plan, the story plan. And what really impressed upon me was that your film is a time capsule. It's, it takes us to 2020, which I, I we all traumatized from that experience, but I almost forgot some of everything that's happened. Of course, like the murder of George Floyd, which creates a real focus for this story. Um, and, you know, um, how, did you know that uh, between like these three women and this activism and this fight for social justice, that that would be like a primary focus? Or was that something, like you said, the moment brought about? That's a great question. I mean, I kind of knew regardless of what happens, there's going to be, you know, something that's probably pretty transformative, right, of, of this moment. But I think I gravitated towards these three individuals because each of them, um, I felt, you know, really uh, were passionate about um, certain issues, but also, um, you know, willing to express that. And so um, I think what we see in the film 
is each of them kind of coming into their own with that. I've been kind of describing the film a little bit of a coming of age documentary. And I think the coming of age is really embracing who they are and for perhaps even the power they have in this moment in terms of contributing, right, to some kind of social movement or contributing to educating people about, um, you know, some of these issues. Yeah, I, I really felt that in your story because several of them at different points, obviously not connected, say like, I, I feel like I need to do more. I feel like I can do more. And I think um, we as a community, as an Asian American community often feel that tension. Um, it, it, you talked about how the pandemic hit, obviously you had to pivot. Um, take us behind the scenes a little. What was some of the biggest challenges in having to make this pivot and, and create this film during a global pandemic? Well, I mean, you know, one of the biggest challenges, which is maybe not even, you know, the pandemic, kind of what you mentioned is, I think a lot of us who grew up here in the United States as, you know, first generation, second generation, um, you know, we're, we're figuring out how to navigate that space of, you know, maybe our parents immigrated here, um, you know, and, and maybe I'm being critical about this moment, or maybe I do see injustices but I don't want to be disrespectful in any way. And I don't want them to think that I'm criticizing their choices of coming here or, you know, um, or their politics. Um, and I think it's a matter of figuring that out. So I think one of the biggest challenges was trying to figure out a way for these three individuals to engage in these conversations openly and truthfully, knowing that they're going into this territory where they're going to feel um, that they might be disrespecting their family in, in some way, right? Um, or that they might be portraying, you know, not the best uh, portrayal of an Asian American or an API individual. Um, and I think for me, a lot of the work that I'm doing and a lot of the things I'm always thinking about is how, as a community, we're always battling this model minority myth, right? Like this idea of let's just keep our heads down, let's not call anything out, don't draw attention to yourself. You, you know, you should just be grateful that you're here in this country. You know, maybe your family, you know, fled a war-torn country. Maybe, you know, your family really had nothing and somehow they managed to make something here. Don't, you know, um, don't disrespect, don't be, um, you know, ungrateful for that. And I think what we see in this film is it's not that at all, right? If anything, it's actually born out of that trust and that love of uh, being able to express yourself and kind of share that. So just reminding myself, or, you know, the individuals who are in it, always them being reminded about what really is the end goal here is to have these honest and truthful conversations and that will ultimately make us much closer, um, I think was, you know, always a challenge navigating that. And then of course, it being the pandemic, who knew what was gonna happen the next day, right? Um, you know, so for instance, you know, for many months we, you know, um, we were focusing so much on, um, you know, the murder of George Floyd and, and rightfully so. And then who knew that the, you know, Atlanta spa shootings would happen for instance. Um, but you're right in the sense of like looking at it all, if anything, the film also becomes a time capsule of everything that we all experienced and and how much it was right and and i don't know if many of us have had that moment yet to self-reflect upon what it is we just lived through and are continuing to live through and if anything i think the film becomes a moment to do that i completely agree we all need therapy from that what we went through but your film was therapeutic <laughs> for me so uh, congratulations, PJ. Uh, really excited um, to have this film out there. I think it's something that people need to watch. And I'm looking forward to your future projects. Uh, you obviously have some important um, stories to tell. So congratulations. Oh, thank you. And thanks for having me.